very good afternoon to the dignitaries and august gathering i know after lunch it is usually i mean a very lethargic people tend to get lethargic but nevertheless maybe my contents will make you more maybe more interesting and keep you awake and today's topic that i have chosen is strategizing oil spill response in the offshore operations i will start with the customary definition which is most acceptable for the oil spill is that an oil spill discharge accidentally or internationally that floats on the surface of water bodies as a discrete mass or is carried by the wind currents and tides the the source is organization for economic cooperation and development now the very pertinent question that comes what kind of threat that oil spill comes from so some of the potential sources that for the oil spill are like large volume of crude oil transportation at high rate from middle east to far east then india has got a coastline of almost 7500 plus kilometer though we stand 18th in the world uh, the highest or the great largest coastline is of canada followed by indonesia i think canada has a west line of almost 2 lakh uh, 2 lakh 2000 kilometers and then indonesia is around 90 lakhs sorry 90000 onwards and then china us comes at 8th position china at 10th and india comes at 18th position as far as the coastline is concerned now since we have got extensive coastline so our coastline is quite vulnerable in the sense that the potent oil spill can come from the backwaters and estuaries creeks and lagoons mangroves or coral reefs beaches mud flats these can all can be affected now there is a presence of oil refineries and np operations along indian coastline then the other sources presence of major or minor ports along the indian coastline and the other issues due to spill may be due to the risk to marine and coastal flora and fauna risk to tourism fishing these are the other impacts which i am talking about so being from the environment my prime focus will be again on the how the oil spill is going to impact the environment so see the very nature of oil the physical nature of oil is more responsible for him environmental damage rather than hazardousness nature now it is not not only affect the animal comprising of all these fishes birds sea and all this which comes to the sea surface but at the same time it affects the marine life also probably in the next coming slides i'll discuss about how these birds or the avi fauna and the mammals or the creature i mean the creatures which live under the water how they are going to be affected then the external exposure of the oil see these are the impact that marine environment can lead to because of the oil spill like public i would cry because see coastline has been always been very interesting and very dear to human beings for recreation facilities or for or for other fishing activity and all that so coastline is a area of concern for us then cleaning of beaches requires huge huge resources manpower and special equipment then oil spill may adversely impact the beach beach ecology then waste management like the voluminous waste is generated out of the oil spill or which are i think nadal the plastic pollutions the waste generated are voluminous that again depends upon the carrying capacity of the tanker that is carrying it then compensation and media management these are the key issues 
that arise from the now this tiered concept of oil spill spins i think this is the basic framework depending upon the quantity of the oil spill takes place so the whole structure is based on this tier 1 facility caters to the requirement of local capacity it means where the oil spill is of minor minor in size maybe maybe up to 700 metric ton i mean earlier the guideline was tier 1 facility was up to 700 metric ton so this can be tackled at the local level local level itself and tier 2 mainly comprises where the intervention would be required for the uh, area capability and which may also require the national capability and in previous in the east previous uh, this tier facility probably tier 2 used to cater to the requirement of almost 10000 metric tons of oil spill if has taken place then tier 3 is again it's a it's a basically this caters to the a very large oil spill and of a much greater magnitude so this involves intervention at a higher level means uh, at a multinational or the regional capability level then international resources also needs to be pulled in this case like in case of ongc we have already signed a participatory members with osrl uk uh, and we have taken this membership since 1994 sorry 1999 so almost almost 23 years there so they have got the international capacity there to cater to the requirement of in case of occurrence of major oil spill now with regard to the what kind of strategy should be developed based upon the incident so these are the different steps which needs to be taken into account like first and foremost is like we need to gather information and assess the situation assess the situation means we need to see the ground reality then refine response goals and what are the priorities that needs to be undertaken then define response and objectives what are the objective that we need to meet and what kind of response that is required then the next step would be to develop strategies to meet the objectives based on the window of opportunity then evaluate the feasibility of the option and strategies in view of the environment and condition and spill specifics then the next step would involve select response options i mean you have to see the which response is to be taken step by and tactical arrangements to implement identified strategy begin the process to obtain necessary approvals permissions that is required then the next forward step would be to prepare an incident action plan for carrying out the identified strategies what action plan action plan means uh, depending upon the urgency of intervention that plan has to be chosen then last implement field response operations plans for each strategy uh, now these are the different competitive methodology for oil spill i think in the earlier session or in the first day there must have been lot of talk on this so basically uh, uh, the point that i wanted to bring home to you all that oil spill do not confined to one particular national boundary as such it can travel far away to the international boundaries then international requirement through various convention and treaties international maritime organizations requirement then spill on sea reduce sunlight penetration to the marine life and can have a devastating impact which i'll talk in the next coming slides then with regard to the stipulation of merchant shipping act mfcc guidelines and nos dcp these are the some of the guidelines that we must need to adhere to
Now another interesting feature about, I mean, what should be the combative, combative strategy will also depend, of the, depend upon the thickness of oil that is generated on account of oil spill. Like see, oil thickness can vary by order of magnitude within different parts of the slick. There can be a different patches of different thickness. Thus, the actual slick thickness and the oil distribution of target areas are very crucial for determining response method feasibility. Another important aspect that needs to be taken into consideration is figure, this figure illustrates the general relationship between on-water response techniques and slick thickness. Then wind rows, heavy oil patches, tor ball, etc., must be considered as they influence the oil encounter rates, chemical doses, and ignition potential of the spill. Now, each method has a different thickness threshold for effective response. See, I have just portrayed the different thickness level and the action that requires to be taken. Now, this slide basically talks about the primary spill response options under various wind sea conditions. They're like mechanical cleanup, and under what condition mechanical cleanup will be the most fruitful and effective? Dispersant, like mechanical cleanup, its effectiveness drops significantly because of the entrainment of or splash, splash over a short period waves developed beyond two to three feet. That is 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 meters in height. Now with regard to the application of dispersant, because of oil droplet size versus slick thickness, constraints and the application dose rate limitations, dispersant work best on the slick thickness of a few thousands to hundreds of an inch. Now burning, again the burning of the very small quantity of spill can be taken up depending upon the law of the land. This is this again, this is permissible only as when the law of the land is, uh, is applicable. Now these are the combative methodology for oil spill. Like in the high sea, containment using boom, recovery using skimmers, absorption and using sorbent, dispers dispersion spraying. These are the all methodology that is used in the high sea. I mean, with much inside the sea. Now with regard to the coastal areas, hot water and high pressure washing, manual labor, and biodimension. These are the three most effective ones used for cleaning up the coastline areas. Other includes the chemical stabilization by oil by elastomizers. Elastomizers are basically a chemical agents which bind with the oil globules and then they, solid, they help in solidifying it. The, after solidification, the advantage is this cannot move away. I mean, that can be contained or confined to a particular area and then that can be lifted. So small, kind, small spillers can be effectively dealt with the usage of elastomers. And then the natural recovery, the, whatever the bacteria that is present, that also takes care of this, I mean, very small particles of oil. Now, with regard to this combative methodology for oil spill, uh, what advantage we have, I think this must have been taken up earlier also. So I'll, I may not deliberate much on this. I think then dispersant spraying also I have heard in the first day there have been a lot of deliberation on the dispersant spraying. Now, combative methodology for oil spills for absorption and adsorption using sorbents. In this case, basically this pre prevents wastage and further pollution. Then after an absorption, the sorbent materials must be effectively retrieved, which is a difficult task altogether. Then sorbents after absorption becomes heavier almost to the tune of 3 to 15 times their weight, and as a result, they may sink and pose a risk to the aquatic life at the sea bottom. Now, the another issue that they are most effective in a small spill 
usage of this absorption solvent in small pills or to manage the leftover traces of a larger spill. Now, high water and high pressure washing, this is a very uh, well used methodology for cleaning up the coastline. Uh, basically, this is to dislodge the trap and the weathered oil from the locations that are generally inaccessible to masonry. Then the released oil must be immediately and adequately recovered to prevent any further contamination. And organisms falling in this can spray zones man can get adversely affected. Biodemission, again, this is an effective tool used for the coastline cleanup. It is a time-taking procedure and may even take years altogether to clean up because this bioremediation is a slow process and it takes substantial time. Then it poses a high chance of aiding the growth of unwanted algae also. The demerit of this is over a period of time, there is chances of growth of unwarranted algae which can chew much of the available oxygen and cut off sunlight. Then chemical stabilization by the elastomizers. This again, I, as explained in the earlier slide, so this compound basically solidifies the oil on the water surface. And the beauty of this elastomers is that it has got a quick response time to the tune of almost 15 to 40 minutes. So they act fast. And probably this is a polymer, poly, this is a polymer isobut isobutylene compound. And this is not non-toxic in nature. And this is, can be found in the food stuff. The only problem is because one of the constituent of this elastomers is gelatin, which may suffocate this marine creatures. Rajivaji, you need to a bit. OK, sir. Sword line production, I have already spoken about sword line production. Then. With regard to the ONGC oil spill response, just want to touch basically that we have got a ONGC oil spill contingency plan is in place. And this plan has the objective of establishing response procedure for the oil spill, combat, contain, and recover, clean up, and dispose of the spill oil, provide preparedness through training and mock drills, and meet statutory requirement as per the guidelines. Now, this have to have a strategy which would include risk assessment, response strategy, equipment that is to be deployed, risk, uh, the management, communication, then the part two involves action and operation, which includes initial procedure, operation planning, control of operation and termination of operation. And then data directive, whatever, uh, whatever uh, action that you are taking, at what location you are taking, what is the sensitivity of that area, those things also need to be captured. So one just interesting thing that I wanted to share that Ipsem Goa have been doing this offshore environment monitoring for the Western offshore since 1994. And this has been done by a number of agencies, not that only one. From 1994 to 2011, National Institute of Oceanography has conducted this, offshore, this Western Offshore Monitoring. Then Messrs. Detox Corporation, they have, they, they have undertaken from 2012-13 to 17-18. And 18-19 onwards have been taken by Vimta Lab, Hyderabad. Then in case of Eastern Offshore, it had started in the year 2014, and up to 2019, it has been undertaken by the National Institute of Oceanography. And off late 2020 onwards, it has been done by the Detox Corporation Private Limited. Now, my main concern to share all this is that we have undertaken this monitoring, offshore monitoring exercise by a number of different agencies, credible agencies. And all, in all their findings, in all their findings, you will see that ONGC ENP operation has not impacted in any way the marine environment. Almost many of the parameters like total petroleum hydrocarbon, 
that have been measured around the installation and which have been compared with the reference installation have been almost in the range 2.2 to 6.3 ppm, which is much, much less than the 40 ppm or the 15 ppm of MAPOL guidelines. Then the dissolved oxygen content, again is very nice, it's up to 5.37 to 7 ppm. Again, this is a healthy sign. And with regard to the heavy metals, these are all well within the, well below the range. In many cases, they are, that are beyond detectable level. So this, I just want to convey to you all that ONGC as a ethical organization have been very pervasive about undertaking environment monitoring in a very robust way. That's all from my desk. Thank you so much. Oil Spill India 2022 is dedicated to the Honorable Prime Minister's Swachh Bharat Abhiyan and Clean Seas.